It has been 107 years since the pioneer missionaries of the Lacair Pioneer Mission arrived at Saiko Village in the Mara country, and the establishment of the mission station at Saiko Village too marked her centenary this year. The lone surviving member missionary of the Lacair Pioneer Mission family celebrated her 76th birthday on April 16th this year as well. While the seed that they had sown struck deep roots in Maralen and blossomed with its fragrance, reaching far and wide, the mortal life of our beloved missionary dear is slowly sailing towards the sunset horizon in this country, beloved by our grandparents. We salute her steadfastness in Christ and love for the Mara country. In celebration of her life in Christ and her dedication to her family and the Mara people, With love, we dedicate this short documentary film to Mrs. Violet Louise Animark. It's morning, Mrs. Mark has always been the first to rise out of bed. After saying her morning prayers, Suit freshen up and go straight to the kitchen. To heat water at the fireplace. Mrs. Mark has always loved to rear domestic fowls, and she would feed them every morning after she emerges out of the kitchen. Hello everyone, today we are here at the complex of the Middle Care Pioneer Mission where the missionaries set up their home here to preach a gospel to the people of Maraland. And this place has stood over a hundred years and today we shall be taking a tour of the compound along with the last living missionary, Mrs. Violet Lewis Annie Mark. The very beautiful and modest Mrs. Lewis Annie Mark and standing beside her here is Mrs. Lillian Richards, her niece. It's a good day, ma'am. Shortly from now on, we shall be taking a tour around the mission compound with these two beautiful ladies here standing beside me. And I would request you to kindly provide us with answers to questions that we would be dying to hear. Yes, we will surely reply all the uh, questions which you are going to raise. Thank you very much. Well, we hope to have a good time today. In the Marat tradition of calling grandparents by the name of their first grandchild, R.L. Lorraine is fondly referred to by the native Maras as Vaili Mepo, which means Vaili's grandfather. Vaili Mepo had settled his son-in-law, Abel Lorraine, on a plot east of their residence, which is just about three minutes' walk from theirs. First of all, ma'am, uh, we'd like to know where you were born and which, in which room you were born? I was born here, in this house. Okay, so let's, ta uh, let's take a look at the room where Mrs. Mark was born. She was born in the early morning hours in the spring of April 16, 1938. This is the room where I was born. Okay, so ma'am, is this the same bed uh, yes. where you were born? Yes. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, let's take a seat here. Okay, Mrs. Mark here was born on the 16th of April in this very bed, in this very room. So ma'am, uh, when you were born, uh, who were the people who came to uh, see you as a baby, who came to visit you? 
My mother, my mother told me that now my husband Mark, okay, well, he was eight years old then. Mm -hmm. He and his mother. Okay. Brought two eggs and came to see me. Okay, they brought two eggs. That's mm -hmm. very, very, very sweet. Uh, so, um, any stories that you might have learned while they were here? No, actually, no one told me about this. Okay. So, Auntie will be able to tell you m more about her stories, I think. Okay. Uh, since uh, the 16th of April, that is tomorrow, is her birthday. Ma'am, I would like to wish you a happy birthday in advance. Thank you very much. Birthday. God bless you. Heaven has already conspired then that Mr. Mark, the first boy who visited Infant Violet with two eggs in hand, later became her husband. Ma'am, for how many years did you live in this place? About five years. Okay, as a five-year-old back then, did you have any vivid memories or recollection of the activities that happened here? Very little. Uh, Only I can remember having ducks in the garden. Okay, is that in the backyard? Mm. Can we take a look at that place? It is just amazing how even after 78 years, the house is still in excellent shape. It is now inhabited by Mrs. Mark's only daughter, Susan and her family. That's the place where they used to keep ducks. My parents mm. used to keep ducks. Lorraine's had raised many domestic fowls like ducks, hens and milked animals like goats and cows for dietary supplements and food. We have here a very beautiful lawn, ma'am. I bet there used to be beautiful flowers here. Lots of flowers and a very green lawn. Okay, used I... to be roses all around here. Oh, I see. One. I don't see roses. Much. No, no, There's no. one there, but mm, there still are very many beautiful long time ago. Ago. Okay. So can you show us the place where the ducks were here? Yeah. Okay. My mother used to boil eggs and peel them and then cut them up very small okay. and feed them with water. Okay, they must be very fed then, mm. well fed. Okay, thank you very much. So ma'am, uh, do you have any other memories living in this house? The only memory I have now is when my mother used to go to my grandmother's house above okay. and help her feed dogs at night. Mm -hmm. And I used to stay with my father. Okay, that would be at night? Yeah. Okay. That's very interesting. So, uh, one last question before we proceed on. Uh, I would like to know who at present resides in this house. My daughter and husband and family. Okay, how many children do they have? Four. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, you'll be turning 76 years old tomorrow. Yes. I'd like to know if you face any problems regarding your diet or do you have any particular choice of food? Not really. Okay, you can eat any food that's available. Ma'am, you've told us earlier that you li you lived in this house only for five years. Can you tell us the reason why you shifted above? And because left my grandparents were not too well. Okay. And we had to go and look after them. Okay. <coughs> So, um, I learned also that your grandfather was ill at that time. Yes. So, after you moved there to the main bungalow, for how long did he live after you moved mm. to the new house that is? I mean the main house. I can't remember how many years. Okay. That was a long That's time. Right. So, should we proceed to the house above, to yes. the main bungalow? The mission station was established upon a twin hill gifted to them by Tulai Lucha, chief of Psycho. It was constructed on one of the hillocks overlooking the village, while the other will be home to the first church in Maraland at a later date. Construction was started in September 1914 and was completed six months later on 2nd March 1915. Uh, Ma'am, can you tell us more about this room? This table mm -hmm. was the table where my parents used to take their food and also when we had visitors, it was used at the same time. Okay, I see. And this is... They had plows in here, mm -hmm. and sometimes it was put on the dinner table, sometimes it was put on the side. And that clock over there mm -hmm. is a wedding present to my parents, my mother and father. Uh, and is it still functional? Yes. I see. And all the pictures on the wall mm -hmm. and elsewhere, what they used to put. They, it's what my parents put, or what my grandparents. Okay, what, what, what is that thing above the clock? It looks like some sort of a chime. Yes, it's chime. Okay, chime. Uh, what is it used for? 
Which is the belt? Uh, okay, is it uh, just a decoration? Or mm, decoration. Okay. So. Those are all only decorations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is a piano over here. Okay. My mother's 21st birthday present. Mm -hmm. uh, how was it brought uh, to this mm. place? It was carried here. Mm -hmm. But it must have come from the plains. Mm -hmm. I've heard it. that uh, these uh, parts, the parts of the piano, had to be disassembled and mm. it was yes. brought on horseback. Yes, something like that, mm -hmm. or carried by people. Mm -hmm. It was long before my time. Okay. This is my great grandfather Lorraine's piano. It was brought up from the Marguerite, through the Marguerite, if I'm not wrong, 1932. It was brought here on the way back, which was, which was the means of transport then. It still works, but it's off tune. It needs to be tuned. It uses uh, springs to give up the notes. And it can be seen from here. Our pioneer missionaries were well versed in music notation and tonic shofa. Most of the earliest marahims must have been first prepared and sung with this piano. And what about this uh, rocking chair behind us? That was used, used to be used by my grandmother. Mm -hmm. When we had the fireplace here, mm -hmm. we had in the cold weather. Okay. We used to light the fire and she used to sit there. Uh, dinner time must have been very lively back then. Yeah. Uh, who played on the piano? My mother. Okay, I, I heard she was a pianist. Mm. Did she ever teach you how to play the piano? I couldn't. <laughs> I didn't like it, so I didn't. Okay, play. you have no much taste mm. in music. Have you ever uh, composed a song? Never. <laughs> okay, you don't take much mm. after your mother, it seems. Okay, then, uh, can you tell us about uh, that huge portrait hanging on the wall? Right there. It's a distant relation, but on my grandparents' side. Okay. That one, also this one. Okay, it, it, it is a painting, I think. Yeah, painting. Mm -hmm. And that one also is a painting. Okay, it was painted by uh, your relatives? No, I don't know. Mm -hmm. No idea. And all the things on the wall here, mm -hmm. um, and photos and that are all done by my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And this elephant was brought from Calcutta. Is it made of wood? Uh, okay, it's wood. a wooden one. And what about that gong uh, hanging in the corner? That's from this Slake people. Mm -hmm. And all the things there, mostly from them too. Mm -hmm. This lamp that's hanging here is a Aladdin lamp. We used to use it a lot, but the mantle we couldn't get anymore, so now we put an electric bulb inside and we use it. Okay, um, uh, besides this room, I'd like to ask you about the birthday parties this, that must have been held in this place. When my parents used to have a birthday party for me with small children, mm -hmm. not big ones. Were they were there birthday cakes? Small cakes. Small cakes. Who a birthday them? cake, my grandparents, mm -hmm. my mother. Okay. They used were to there, do it every were there year. lots of uh, music? And then I used to use the, the gramophone and okay. nursery rhymes. Mm -hmm. It must have been quite a lot of different fun. kinds of cakes and biscuits. Mm -hmm. About twelve, all my friends, about twelve people, okay. twelve or sixteen like that. Not many. Mm -hmm. So, uh, would you rem uh, happen to remember any particular birthday party of yours? No, it's done every year like that. Okay. It's all a very happy time because mm -hmm. my mother was very good then, like that. Mm. You have so many uh, cherishable mm. memories. Uh, right now we're in the living room of the Lorraine Bangalore. Standing here with me is uh, Michael, the son of uh, Mrs. Mark. Uh, Michael, could you tell us what this uh, black box is? It's my great-grandfather's gramophone. Reverend Lorraine's gramophone. Okay, I see. So, um, how long has it been since uh, it landed up here? I'm not sure about when it was brought up here, but 
I only know it was his. Okay. It must be quite long. So he was the one who brought it here? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so what I'm wondering right now is if this gramophone could still be played because there aren't many gramophones that are still functional, at least in Mizoram. Yeah. So if it can be played, can you please demonstrate it for us? Still works. The gramophone was a scene box to the natives, something which was quite mesmerizing and magical. It was one item which was attracted many a visitor, and very often it be taken out to the veranda for the listening pleasure of the village folks. It was one piece of item which was tremendously helpful in attracting audiences for their mission preaching work. Well, as we've just witnessed, this gramophone still works indeed, and we could hear songs like Onward Christian Soldiers and O Come All Ye Faithful. This is indeed a priceless treasure, I must say. Thank you very much, Michael. The written word has always been a powerful tool of the gospel everywhere. Even the devil knows this too well. We are now inside R.A. Lorraine's study and this study has been the scene of numerous temporal and spiritual battles. Here he wrestled with the Marah script, translations of the Holy Bible and hymns from English into Marah, and physically wrestled with the devil. This gown on display was worn by Mrs. Margaret Lozai Lorraine on her mortal remains in Ludiana. It was exhumed and brought back to Maraland in 1992, along with her bones, we are now looking at a portion of the original storeroom. It was a very essential part of the house as most of the food provisions like caned meat and flour were sourced from Scotland and London. The bowl we are looking at now was primarily used by R.L. Lorraine for holding or storing water for baptism. The Pioneer Missionary couple did beautiful landscape planning for their flower garden. The stone encircled flower gardens we are looking at right now are still those laid out by them over a century ago. Uh, Ma'am, uh, you were an only child, so during the times when your parents were away on work from home, uh, whom did you associate with? Who was your friend? Who were your friends? My parents were never away from home together. Oh, I see. So you were either with your mother mm. or your father. Yeah. But, uh, apart from them, who were your close friends? My close friends, one or two close friends that I had have now all passed away. Mm -hmm. It was uh, my husband's sister mm -hmm. and one or two others. They've all passed away now. Oh, I see. Um, lastly, before we conclude, ma'am, uh, as we can see, the celebrations for the 100th anniversary of this bungalow is going on and celebration of your birthday as well. So, we'd like to hear a word of two from you about what you think of this program. It's very, very good. Very good. And it's, it's a blessing to us. It's more than we've ever hoped or imagined. And outreach and all their friends, and all they've been helping. Mm -hmm. They've spent so much of their time, so much money, mm -hmm. in all ways. And we as a family are very, very pleased to them. We thank them, and may the Lord bless them through all their work at any time. Mm -hmm. And may this uh, 
this uh, hundred years and the birthday all together may make a good road for the Larkers to all come together again mm -hmm. yes. and be a happy family mm -hmm. yes. as it used to be. Mm -hmm. That's, that's There's no very division. True. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, taking into view of all the struggles and efforts they've put into, mm. I mean, your forefathers, I must say this is a very deserving occasion for you all and your family. We wish you all the best in life. Okay, thank, and thank you very all much. Those dancing thank sports. you very much for spending thank time you. with us. We are now going towards the family burial ground of the Pioneer Missionaries, which is on the eastern corner of Laurinville just a few minutes walk away from the house where Mrs. Mark was born. Unlike most Piner missionaries who returned home, the Le Care Piner Mission missionaries embraced the Moroccan tree as their own. We are proud and feel tremendously blessed too, to have with us in our own country the mortal remains of both our Piner missionaries at Psycho Village, their mission station. On January 18, 1907, Mr. Reginald Arthur Lorraine and his wife left England on their journey to further India, Moraland, across the mighty oceans by ships, through the Indian plains by train and other old means of transportation, and over the hills and ravines atop mills, and on foot they finally arrived at their proposed mission station Saiko just before 4 o'clock in the afternoon on September 26, 1907. Uh, right now we're approaching the Lorraine graveyard and we shall be seeing the places where the missionaries who've gone ahead have been buried. Uh, Ma'am, can you tell us how many people were buried in this place? My grandmother and grandfather mm -hmm. and my mother and father. Okay. And one adopted. So child. there would be five people buried mm -hmm. so far. The first picture... My grandfather and grandmother. Yes, that's Mr. Reginald Arthur mm. Lorraine and his wife. And the second picture is uh, Mrs. Violet Lewis and Mark. Is that right? Yeah. That's your picture. Yeah. Okay, she's looking very beautiful there. And the next one is close by Margaret Lorraine Foxell. And the last one is Mr. Albert Bruce Lorraine Foxell. This is where my parents are buried. My father was buried here first, and then my mother who died at Louisiana. Her remains were brought and were also buried here together. So both of them are here together in this grave. This, this graveyard, this is where my grandparents, the founders of the Lake Panya Mission are buried. Both of them are buried here. My grandfather was ill for a long time. He passed away and then a few years later, 
my grandmother had an accident and she also passed away when she was buried here. Both of them were buried here together. His divine favor in sending the Lorraines for the Mara people is also manifested in the pace at which the message of the gospel traveled through the land and bread of the Mara country. By the turn of a century, the Mara people can claim to be a red present Christian community, irrespective of the geographical boundaries east and west Mara land in which they live. My last message to the whole Lake country is that the Lord will bless them and they too will come together and do all as much as they can in all their works, the young people, to make their Lake country a happy place again. And that all the young people who now do drugs and other things, that those who are working against this may be blessed and clean the whole country and be a happy place and all worship Christ together. Thank, Thank you. you. They sowed us the way to eternity and gave wings to our civilization, awaiting their master's bugle call. Their mortal remains now humbly rest, to be awakened in glory bright, here in the country providence beckons them to be. They shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and as the stars forever and ever. <laughs>